This is the community centre in Newton Hamilton. The one that uh, Sinn Féin and SDLP councillors voted not to let us use. Uh, they're now facing uh, dismissal from the council and hopefully by October they'll all be dismissed. Upwards of I think it's 16 councillors. Now these are the same people who are sitting in Stormont who talk about equality who voted again the victims getting used to this community centre. But now we're supposed to believe it was okay because they're sitting in Stormont. Does people not understand? These are the same people who voted to stop Protestant victims who were slaughtered in this area from using a community centre which they're entitled to use. Now they're in government making decisions for the whole of Northern Ireland. Is that the type of decisions that they're going to make for the betterment of the Protestant community? I don't think so. But the odd times, this police station and in the square, um, this whole area was destroyed by the IRA uh, over the 30 odd years of bombing. Uh, but now it's okay because uh, they have got what they wanted. They're sitting in storming. What Mr Paisley said would never happen has happened. What Peter Robinson said would never happen has happened. Not only has it happened, but it's happened with the help of the DUP. Now, this town here, there's quite a few people killed in and around it. Um, there's men who've been kidnapped and held for a number of days and tortured, brutally tortured, and their bodies dumped on the road. The men responsible for that are still walking about today. As a matter of fact, some of them have a say with our so-called politicians within government, especially the Sinn Féin politicians, well, mostly the Sinn Féin politicians, uh, who quite happily kidnap people and cut blunts out of them before they murdered them. Now, what sort of an animal would do that? You couldn't even do it to a dog yourself. But these are the civilised people we have now in government. I don't think so. This police station here was attacked back in the 1920s by the IRA uh, where they tried to basically burn to the ground. Something like 300 IRA men. Frank Aiken was in charge. Um, seven men held them off the whole night. Uh, again, 300 odd armed IRA men. Now, we're talking 85 years later, this station might close. Not because it's been attacked. Because the IRS decided, well how long, we can close the station by not attacking it. Because the government is prepared to put the police and army out of areas where they're controversial. So we're now living in a situation where we have no protection, no security. The, uh, the IRA are still fully armed. You know, they talk about decommissioning. They've lost more stuff than they've decommissioned. Don't try and tell us they have decommissioned for the heaven. For the, after they had said they had decommissioned, there was a show of armed IRA men on the roads of South Armagh. Now, where did they get the weapons from if they decommissioned them? But again, you didn't see that on TV. You didn't hear it in the papers. Because there was a blanket ban put on it. But there was upwards of times of 20 armed men on the roads around here while there wasn't a policeman to be found. Not that it was a fault of the policeman, it was a fault of the government. They wouldn't allow the security force to deal with these scum. We talk about uh, justice. They want investigations into truth commissions. You can't handle the truth. The biggest collusion issue, or sorry, the biggest case of collusion was with the IRA and the British government. The British government were running the IRA. Some of the top men or most of the top men within the provies were actually working for the IRA. Scapatici, Dennis Donaldson, uh, and there's another name now that's come out, uh, as been mentioned, a member of Sinn Féin, senior member. But there's more than that to come. We know of at least 20 top men whose names will be coming out in the very near future, who are all senior members of the IRA. That's why, Jerry, you weren't shot that day. Remember, it was an informant within the loyalists who took the powder out of the rounds that saved your life. So you owe the British Intelligence Service a lot. You actually owe them your life. And the same with quite a few other boys. 
they were being protected by the army because they were working for the British government. It's easy to talk about being a loyalist in an area of 